What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. My name is Nick, also known as Clickwood, and I am joined, as always, by my partner in crime, Dustin, also known as Project KSL. And week two of the NFL season is now in the books, and we've got a lot to talk to. Uh, There's a ton of string of injuries happening to some of the top players in the game. Uh, So today we're actually going to be focused specifically on the aftermath of those injuries, and we're also going to talk to you guys about some of the people that you should be buying and selling to help your fantasy team this week here. So we'll also have our waiver wire rankings as we head into week three, where Dustin and I will give you each of our top 10 players that you guys should be looking to pick up this week. But the first topic is going to be one that we just found out about moments before we started this podcast. So we don't really have all the information at this point. But the reports on SportsCenter are that Adrian Peterson has been placed on the exempt list. Now, I don't exactly know what that means. But from what we understand, it's basically a list that a team can put the team a player on uh, that will deactivate them, quote unquote, until further notice. Now... Earlier this week, Adrian was actually activated by the Vikings, uh, and there was a lot of controversy about that. Obviously, I made a video on it, and I'm sure some of you saw that, but uh, I know there was a lot of pressure put on the Vikings by some of their big sponsors. I know Radisson Hotels, for example, they're not sponsoring the team anymore. So, yeah, so there's a lot of pressure on these guys, but the fantasy implications of of this whole thing are... Yeah, they're crazy, man. So, Dustin, what what do you think you do with Adrian Peterson now that he's been placed on the exempt list? I mean, is this something where you think he's going to play for the rest of the year? I mean, if you're listening to the reports, most people that are reporting on it basically seem that, like you said, it's it's until further notice, and a lot of people are saying he's going to be sidelined a long time. That basically means that they caved under, under the pressure of everyone else saying, you need to sit this guy, let this play out. You cannot have him out there. This is a nightmare for you guys. And it sounds yeah. like they're going to let this thing play out, and I highly doubt it finishes during the time of the NFL season. So, yeah. to me, it means he's basically gone for a while. I mean, like I said last week, I think he'd play again, and they activated him. But now I definitely don't think he plays again. Yeah, you know, I had egg on my face. Uh, the last time that we did a podcast, I was telling people, I mean, I would trade Adrian Peterson for mediocre players, <laughs> frankly, yeah. uh, because I was pretty convinced that the Vikings had made the right decision, that they were going to stick by it. And then they decided that they were going to activate him. And I was just, I was beyond words. I mean, my video that I made, I think, explains it enough. And I'm sure you guys can go take a look at that if you want to. But um, I, I mean, at this point, it's unfortunate for the Vikings because now they just look like they caved because their sponsors decided that they don't want to sponsor them anymore. Their whole versus... press conference seems so out of, like, whack, too. It seemed like they had a. Uh... Mike Zimmer and they had the GM Rick Spillman down there talking about it. It didn't mm-hmm. seem like they even wanted to activate him. It really seemed like it was Ziggy Wolf's decision to go over their head and do it. And yep. then he sent them out there to defend his decision. It was so awkward and just uncomfortable watching them trying to defend the move. Yeah, and then you have the governor of Minnesota, Mike Day- or yeah. Mark Dayton, out there. I almost called him Mike Dayton. <laughs> uh, Mark Dayton, yeah, he's out there doing uh, saying stuff publicly about how he doesn't think Adrian Peterson should be playing. Right. So, I mean, it's just it's that pressure Mikey plus the fact – Minnesota is, uh, I live in Minnesota, and we're a pretty liberal state. Um, I am not a liberal, despite what people (laughs) want to say. Uh, I'm I'm not a conservative either. I'm basically an anarchist. Let's call it what it is. Yeah, okay. And, uh, you know, so I'm not not really giving a shit what Mark Dayton has to say. But obviously the pressure from him and the the sponsorship and that kind of stuff, it's unfortunate because the Vikings really just walk out of this looking like assholes. Yeah, they should have just kept Um, them deactivated and let it play out to begin with. They they could have looked so good. You know, they could have done what the Ravens didn't. Like, first thing when they see stuff like this and it's like, man, we see the pictures, it it is over. Yeah, let it play out. Be done. (laughs) Yes. I mean, if, if it comes out that all this stuff is totally false for whatever reason, well, okay, then you reactivate him and, and you know, you say you you're probably, sorry and you fucked up. Yeah. But yeah, but it's a lot safer to go that route than it is to go this route where you're basically saying, yeah, fuck it, we don't care because he's so good and he's too valuable to our team, we're going to ignore this, and then you have to eventually cave because everyone's like, you need to calm the fuck down. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate, but the, the positive for this, uh, as far as fantasy goes is, at least, is that – 
Uh, we have somebody named Matt Asiata who actually yeah. looked pretty he's decent. Out, son. He looked pretty decent. Um, and the nice thing is, is that it doesn't really look like he's going to be splitting carries. No, nah, he's um, the guy. He's, I mean, he's big enough too to carry a workload too. So yeah, he's definitely the guy there. Yeah, there were some thoughts that he wouldn't be, but I mean, I I think Dustin and I pretty well pretty well agreed that he was going to be the guy going forward, and it makes yep. sense. He ran really hard. He caught a touchdown. I don't know if that's sustainable or anything, but he caught a few um, balls too. I mean, even beyond yeah. the touchdown, yeah, they were using him in the passing game a little bit. So, I mean, I think it'll be interesting to see where this goes with Matt Asiata as far as what his fantasy value is. Um, yep. I I don't think it changes much from the last time that we talked. Um, it's but a little I, bit higher because I mean now it's seems even more unlikely he plays re- like soon so fair fair um my my stance was that he wasn't gonna play anyway so i mean it doesn't change yeah, for me i guess for you you were stance. a little yeah you i think you were a little less committal about it and yeah. i ended up being wrong but yeah. <laughs> but in the end right so uh f everybody who says anything in the comment section about mm-hmm. how wrong i was but uh so i think that's obviously the 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 big story that just came out that we needed to yep, talk a little news. bit about. But, you know, like I said, it doesn't really change much from the last time that we talked. So yeah. let's go forward. Uh, let's talk about some of the other things that happened this past Sunday. And they were mm-hmm. they were injury after injury after injury. We're talking top players. I mean, Jamal yeah, Charles went down. Yeah, and your, Bronco, your Broncos injured Jamal Charles. What the hell is wrong with your team, dude? It You're trying to shit. ruin our fantasy seasons. Yeah, well, the defense is trying to ruin my life too. So there's a lot of things wrong with that. Dustin team has right to now. take heart medicine now after watching oh <laughs> Demarcus Ware and Akeem Tlaib are the only guys that are showing up. Keep, I don't keep know. Akeem Tlaib, best hell. corner in football right now, but everyone else just not really doing their job. Yeah, nice, nice that you got some good free agent acquisitions though. Oh, Tlaib, everybody so else looks good, like man. shit. Yeah, Tlaib, Demarcus Ware is like leading the league in pressure. Tlaib's the number one corner, and everyone else is an ass clown. <laughs> So, <laughs> but anyway, though Jamal Charles did get injured. Uh, he has a high ankle sprain, yeah. from what it sounds like. Andy which Reed's is saying it's not serious, though. So I mean, take that what you, what you will. But yeah, and that's the thing. I I mean, not that Andy Reid has a long history of screwing with us as far as injuries go. I can't but, think of any. But yeah. But the thing is, though, is that the, the when it's called an ankle sprain, uh, I don't corn. know how yeah. many guys are have quote unquote had an ankle sprain and just. I mean, not that they're not playing, but they just suck ass. Like, oh, yeah, it's I mean? a long-term like, thing. I mean, anytime it's a sprain, that means ligaments have been torn. Yeah. So you and, really wonder the severity of how many ligaments torn, to what extent. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different variables of just a sprain. Right. And and the un- the really unfortunate thing is that Jamal Charles is the kind of guy who really benefits from explosion. Oh, yeah. You know, that, cuts, that speed. Moving around. Yeah, yeah, and I just – I question if that is going to be able to continue. So uh, I'm – Fair enough. My personal opinion is that it, it, although it sounds like there's a good possibility he plays this weekend and, and could play for the rest of the season, okay, I'm downgrading goodness. Jamal Charles on my list. Oh, yeah, without uh, a doubt. Yeah. Officially, Jamal Charles is down to about my probably, what, six, seven at running back he's now? He's definitely a top ten running back. Yeah. He's no longer in that top three or four. I mean, he's, a guy like Le'Veon Bell, I think, is certainly past him yeah. now for like going forward. DeMarco Murray, I think, yeah. moves ahead of him at this point. I mean, Murray's yeah. got his own injury concerns for down the road, but for right now, for right DeMarco now, Murray yeah, looks I mean, like an animal. Go off what you but, know, and yeah, he's been healthy and tearing it up. So yeah, Murray's definitely ahead of him. Le'Veon Bell definitely ahead of him. But okay, so here's the here's the big thing. Now you have a guy named Niall Davis who stepped in for Jamal yeah, Charles this past weekend, too. and he, for the most part, unless you were looking at the guy's jersey and the fact that he Jamal Charles is a little more uh, dread dreadage going he's on a in the back. Too. Niall Davis is a big guy for his speed, man. Niall Davis, yeah. he's betting 220. But but my point is, is I, I think as far as production goes, you wouldn't have noticed any difference between the two of these guys, at least I mean, for one game. I mean, dude, Niall Davis was such a sick prospect coming out. I remember seeing that guy, and it was like, man, he had those fumble issues in college, and some people really questioned how hard he would run. Yeah, but I mean, if you're talking about just a pure athlete, dude's two twenty five ten. He, I think he ran like a four three, just insane combine numbers. Yeah, but it was just everyone saw that last year of Arkansas, his tape, and it was just like, man, he's terrible. He's not running out runs. He's not finishing. He's fumbling the ball. Yeah. Does he really committed to this? But now you see him in the Chiefs game, and it's like, damn, this guy looks like the real deal. This guy looks like a bona fide first round pick running back talent. So being that that is the case, and we've seen him be productive. I mean, are you going out there if you have Jamal Charles? And I know you drafted Jamal Charles yeah, in some leagues, and you drafted Niall weeks. Davis as the backup because you handcuffed yeah. your, your and stud. And then I dropped him. I but, dropped him two days before he got hurt. <laughs> but but the question now is, what do you do with a guy like Niall Davis? I mean, are you going out there and making him a major priority if you own Jamal Charles? I mean, if, if Jamal Charles is on your roster, is Niall Davis automatically your number one waiver wire acquisition? 
No, because I'm gonna, I, I, I don't think Niall Davis is, like I said, I'm a big Niall Davis fan. I think he's a really good running back. But I don't think, unless Jamal Charles is absolutely out for an extended period of time, I think his base case scenario, if, if Charles plays this week, like a lot of people say he will, it's going to turn into a timeshare. And I hate timeshares for running backs. Yeah. I especially hate timeshares where the running where the lead running back is the whole offense. So you're sure. basically into a situation where it's like even if Charles plays this week, now they're probably going to get some touches. So they're both going to be dropped. So no, not unless I think he's going to be out for an extended period of time, and I don't. So okay. I, I'm picking up Nile Davis, but I'm not putting a huge priority on my own Nile Davis. I'm trading him. But pay close attention to what the reports are. Pay close oh, yeah. attention practice to if reports. Jamal Charles is practicing, yep. um, how many snaps he's taking in practice, because all that stuff is very, very important for fantasy oh, yeah. implications, especially, this, for the, especially the, this the weekend. Sprain. Yeah. So let's move on to the next guy who got injured. And this was a guy that you and I were both pretty high on, uh, especially going into this past weekend. And, and uh, unfortunately, no Sean Moreno. Yeah. It sounds like is going to miss significant for time, four to eight weeks, uh, which is a huge span, by the way, four to eight weeks. I mean, yes. they can't give us a little bit more of a <laughs> definition on that. But a dislocated elbow is going to keep him out. So let me ask you, um, <laughs> It sounds like this team has been trying to just avoid putting Lamar Miller on the field. Yeah. I mean, are you avoiding Lamar Miller from your fantasy roster? Yeah, <laughs> at this you point? know, we, again, I, we, we say it all the time. We know what this guy is. And Miami just, it doesn't seem like they really trust Lamar Miller. Even this past week, they used the running back, and he's completely, I, I completely cannot remember his name, that they brought in after No Sean went down. It's not Daniel Thomas, it's somebody else. And they brought him in there, and he was even spelling with Lamar Miller. I don't. Again, I think it's a timeshare. And yeah. anytime you're in a running back timeshare, I don't want it. No, Sean added so much to that offense. It's such a shame to see him go down. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, he was great last year for your Broncos, but oh yeah, Miss are him. you? Uh, let me ask you this: Are you keeping him rostered in a 12-team league, or are you letting oh, him go with the assumption that he's not going to play for a while? I think you got to let him go because I think I, I mean. Unless you are just in a situation where you love your starters, you're injury free minus no Sean Moreno, and you can stash him. But if you're in a situation like most people are, where they're having to try and look at the waivers every week to try to get somebody new or evaluate their team week to week, you probably got to cut them loose because, I mean, like you said, the time frame is so broad. I mean, four to eight weeks is just that could be out for two months, and you're keeping this guy rostered, hoping that he'll come back and get his same role, which is an unknown at this point. Right. I, I pretty much agree with that as well. I'm not, I, I, it's, it's a tough situation to be in with no Sean because I, I think he could be so good, but to me, I just, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm probably cutting him. Yeah. I think, I think I'm probably to. cutting him. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's just, if you we just don't know when he step, when he comes back, if he's going to be good enough anyway. That's exactly it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So next, next topic that I wanted to talk about is Ryan Matthews, who sprained his MCL on Sunday, and right. he's expected to be out four to five weeks. So at least they gave us a little bit better definition with that one. Yeah, about a month. But, but uh, now this one I think is a little bit more interesting because Matthews actually has a long injury history, and, yeah, and his his injury in, injury history is kind of an interesting one because he's tried to play through a lot of stuff and he ends up coming out of games even when he does get back up on the field. Yeah. So I think both of us would agree that Danny Woodhead is the guy you want to own here. But the thing is, is that I just, I don't know for sure that he is going to end up taking all of the carries. So are we buying Donald Brown as somebody that fantasy owners can actually trust over the next few weeks? I'm going to tell you what about Donald Brown and more, I guess more specifically Danny Woodhead. I really think that Danny Woodhead is similar to Darren Sproles in the fact that they have their own roles and they're different from a starting running back's duties. So yeah, I honestly, I'm not gonna be surprised at all if Donald Brown steps in there. They paid him a lot of money. I don't like Donald Brown as a player at all. I think he sucks, Yeah. but they paid him a lot of money to come in there and take carries because they were going to try to keep Matthews healthy. That didn't happen. He's getting all the carries now. I think there's a pretty big priority to get a guy like Donald Brown if he's out there now. I think he's going to have a serious, or not not necessarily a serious impact, but he's probably going to be a guy that's worth starting for a lot of weeks while Ryan Matthews is out. Yeah, and, and we're going to be starting to hit the dreaded bye weeks in the coming weeks yeah, here. Exactly. And there are a lot of people out there who did what 
some of the fantasy experts called doing the opposite at the beginning of your fantasy draft. So you went out there and you drafted Jimmy Graham in the first round and you drafted Des Bryant in the second round and maybe you drafted uh, somebody who slipped like an AJ Green, well, maybe not an AJ Green, but like maybe like an Alshon Jeffrey level receiver yeah. in the third round or something like Jordy that. Nelson or something, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So y- your first three picks were not running backs and right. you're in a tough situation now, If especially if you're somebody that had like a Ryan Matthews or a no Sean Moreno, or, you know, one of these guys that got injured and you were really relying on them to be an every week starter for you. And I think that's the kind of situation where you need to go out there and you need to really make it a priority to get a guy like a Donald Brown or a huge priority. If you're in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. So I, I'm I'm interested in him in that aspect. Um, I don't really see him being a fantasy superstar. Like I said, I still like Danny Woodhead better out of the backfield. But I do agree with Dustin that he has his own defined role in that offense. I do think Danny Woodhead is going to be on the field more than Donald Brown, which is, do I think, going to be I, – I do. I mean, he was on the field more than uh, Matthews to start the season. Yeah. Uh, in week one, I think he took 66% of the snaps or something like that. So – um, I mean, it's he was a dud week one. Though. He, I mean, he totally was a dud, and that's the interesting part about it because he was out there that much, but he only touched the ball like ten times. So it was a really weird situation. But I still think Danny Woodhead's the guy you really want to own in the backfield if you had to choose between the two. But then again, Donald Brown, I'm still going out there I like and picking him, both. him up. Yeah, I don't so, think there's really a wrong answer there. So uh, next person on our list is Mark Ingram. Oh, and man. unfortunately, this is one who – it was another guy that we were singing his praises. And it was funny yeah. because both of us have been talking about – week. Yeah, and, and we were talking about what a piece of shit this guy is, how much he sucks before this. But then the first two weeks of the season, man, he has looked so good. Yeah. Um, that New Orleans offense is – I don't know what it is. I don't know if they changed something or if Mark Ingram's just decided that he He's actually wants to more. play football like yeah. a legitimate human being. <laughs> but um, – <laughs> So the tough situation is that he injured his hand on Sunday, and it's supposed to keep him for out for about a month. Uh, same type of time frame as we have with Ryan Matthews. Uh, possibly a similar time frame for Noshan Moreno, but again, we don't really know for certain. But the thing that sucks is... Um, we don't really know that there's necessarily a defined person to take his role in this offense. We have to assume that Pierre Thomas is going to get a slight uptick, but right. who's the guy that you think is going to get the biggest upgrade in this offense? I mean, for strictly the running game, I mean, obviously Kyrie Robinson is going to see an increased workload. They like Kyrie yeah. Robinson. I mean, a lot of people like Kyrie Robinson. He was a stash guy, a lot of people were saying, before the fantasy season started. So I certainly think he takes a big step up yeah. as far as uh, fantasy value going forward now. Yeah, Kyrie Robinson is definitely someone that needs to be owned in every league now with this injury. So how high do you bump him up and how high do you bump up Pierre Thomas as far as like your overall rankings on running backs? I mean, does Pierre Thomas go from being like a flex to being an RP RB two for you in PPR formats now? No, I don't think so. Cause I, I, again, I think, I think Pierre Thomas falls in that Sproles Woodhead kind of category that I think they have their own role. Mark. I mean, other than a, a random game, maybe here or there, I, Pierre Thomas isn't going to go over a hundred yards rushing anytime soon. And sure. he's gonna he's gonna be using the passing game, but again, his his upside is limited outside of PPR, and I don't think that's gonna change because I think if they're gonna go with a heavy running game to like game plan against whatever team they may face, I think most of that duty is gonna fall on Kyrie Robinson. So I don't think he takes that much big of an upgrade. Kyrie Robinson, I think, is upgraded to a significant like I could probably play him in the flex at least sure. and see what happens with him. I think I now. agree with that. I, I think Kyrie Robinson, I think we we have to wait on him a little bit. I'm not as excited about him as I was Mark Ingram. I don't think it's like a you know, one for one kind of a swap or anything like that. But I do think that you bump him up on your list. Now, the last situation that I want to talk about is the injury to Doug Martin. And and I know Doug Martin missed pretty much the entire, well, what he missed 11 games last year, something like that. Vast majority of the season. Uh, And he looked like shit before that. And he looked like shit in week one this year. So he's looked bad. I mean, Bobby Rainey looked bad. Yeah. And that's the thing is Bobby Rainey stepped in for him this week and put up just monster numbers. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of that is just, it's completely random. Um, You know, obviously the defense wasn't preparing for Bobby Rainey. They were preparing for Doug Martin, and that can have a lot to do with it on a one-week situation. But I think that, that there's a real possibility that the Buccaneers look to Bobby Rainey going forward. And, and we know Doug Martin might be back on the field this week, but if he starts doing really bad like he has been, I just I can see them slightly working Bobby Rainey more towards almost being the guy there. What do you think? Yeah, I mean Bobby Rainey's like I said, he has straight up looked better than uh, Doug Martin. So I 
I definitely think that this looks bad for anyone that drafted Martin high in these drafts because I don't think Bobby Rainey is going away no matter what happens with Martin. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I think Bobby Rainey, like I said, uh, going forward, let me ask you this. Going forward, you have the choice one for one. You get you get to pick your choice between these two guys. Do you want Doug Martin or do you want Bobby Rainey? Um, you know, I, I think I'd probably still say Doug Martin. Yeah. Because I still think he has higher upside. And not that I'm down on Bobby Rainey. I like them both. But I think if I had to choose straight up, I'm getting offered one for one in a trade, I'd want the Doug Martin end of it. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think I agree with that just because I think that, like you said, I think the upside is higher. But, man, it's like... He's looked terrible so far. He's looked yeah, I mean, there's no so way shitty. Yeah. Like, oh, man. Like, if I knew uh, if I knew that Doug Martin wasn't going to play, yeah. um, I think I would be... Bobby Rainey. I'd, yeah, I think I'd be quite a bit higher on Bobby Rainey. But it's a tough situation because I could really foresee this becoming a splitting carry situation. Exactly. Like we talked another about. timeshare shit show. Another one. Yeah, yeah timeshares are just so bad for fantasy because unless one guy has, like, a really defined role like the Darren Sproles and the yeah, Danny, Danny Woodhead and those Woodhead, guys, Thomas. we just... And we've already we've already talked about all those situations, but yep. um, you know, unless you're in a situation like that, it, it just, just becomes a brutal, brutal week to week thing to try and predict who is going to do something productive. So, yep. yeah, no it, it's a it's a tough situation. Um, I still think that we are both going after Bobby Rainey to some extent. Oh yeah, in our, on the waiver wire. Oh yeah, just so. Doug Martin's already been nicked up a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. Rainey's looked good. So yeah, yep. absolutely got to go after him. So, last injury that I want to talk about. Man, it seems like we've been talking about injuries for quite some time. Unfortunately, we have to talk about them because they're just piling up. But um, yep. RG3 dislocated his left <laughs> ankle on Sunday. And yeah. that is probably going to keep him out for quite some time, it yeah, seems like. Yeah, it might be the season. Yeah. Um, the coaching staff seems to think he could be back before the end of the season. But I think you and I are pretty much in agreement on this. I don't think he plays again this season and not just because of the injury i think kirk cousins is going to take that job yeah i mean jay gruden was really really non-committal on rg3s keeping the starting job if kirk cousins comes in and plays well and straight up i think kirk cousins is a better fit for that offense i think kirk cousins might be a better quarterback i'm so down on rg3 that i i see no reason i mean if you if you if you have him in fantasy still cut him he's worth nothing and rg3 I, yeah you mean oh yeah, yeah yeah not kirk cousins yeah if you own rg3 cut him he's worth nothing and i I don't think he comes back like you. If he does, I'm probably not even going to pick him up because I think Kirk Cousins has a real, has a serious chance to hold on to that job. I do too. Um, I, I think it's going to put the Reds. I mean, this when they drafted Kirk Cousins after they drafted RG3, they put themselves in this situation. So it's hard yeah. to feel bad for them. I know it's um, they feel um, good for him. I mean, that, I mean, in a way, it's worked out for him. That's that's true. Had um, legit cover but, quarterback. But now they have to sit here with RG3, who is a first well what second overall pick like, on the roster too. and yeah. basically get nothing out of the guy yeah um they got one really ridiculously good season out of him and then it was just crap ever since then so yeah. uh sucks for them but for fantasy purposes i think her cousins uh realistically has a shot to be every bit as good fantasy wise as rg3 was at least you I mean not yeah. in his prime obviously oh, okay. but all right um, yeah, all right uh, not the not the year yeah, where he was about like the number one, two three when he's like a top yeah. five quarterback now, now right right i think he was the number two quarterback something year, outrageous if I remember correctly. like that yeah but, all that rushing yeah but i still i think Kirk cousins is the better passer um i think he can make take it better advantage of the weapons that they have in this offense and they're piling up the weapons there yeah i mean, I mean they Reed, paul is good too J- I mean, Deshaun Jackson, Jackson Pierre, Pierre Garçon, or, or, Pierre Garçon or, led the league in receptions last year with yeah. uh, with just mediocre. With dumpster quarterback. Yeah, yeah. just garbage. At, I mean, it was just meh. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think that Kirk Cousins can come in and uh, really be somebody that stabilizes this offense. And I like him as a low-end quarterback one, potentially. And, and if not a, a low-end quarterback one, at least a solid quarterback two, somebody that you can yeah, play absolutely. the matchups He's with. definitely someone you want to look at this week. Yeah, absolutely. so... I, I do like him. Um, now, the last thing that we should mention about this whole situation is that, uh, I mean, RG3, at the end of the day, does have the higher upside between these oh, two yeah, players. Oh, yeah, with the rushing. But, I mean, the, the thing um, is, is he hasn't really rushed it very much significantly at all since he got hurt. I mean, they basically just told him, like, dude, you need to be a legitimate quarterback. We can't do this read option shit for our entire offense anymore. And he was like, well, I'm kind of fucking terrible, so I don't know. Yeah. 
And and I think the other fantasy implication of this is that I, I know it sounds crazy because Alfred Morris had such a productive season that his rookie year with RG3 in that read option offense. But right. I think this offense with Kirk Cousins actually being a legitimate quarterback gives Alfred Morris the opportunity to be a potential RB1. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that our Alfred Morris is they're going to go and run a lot more I for I formation, more basic formations. And I think I'd certainly have a foundation for a running game to set up for him. Yeah, I definitely think he has higher. I, I like it better going forward for Alfred Morris if Kirk Cousins is a quarterback. Yep. So, all right, let's move on now to talk about our buy low and sell high candidates. Now, these buy lows are the players that we're looking for. Uh, we're trying to acquire these players onto our team. We think that these guys are at the lowest value that they're going to be at for quite some time. Yeah. And I, I think that the the first one on my list is one who was drafted in the top five overall in fantasy drafts this year, and that is Eddie Lacy. Yep. Now, I'm still not buying him as being in the same conversation as the top tier of running backs. I don't like him as, you know, up there with LaShawn McCoy. And, yeah, you uh, always knew my stance on that. Yeah, and, and I think we I agree with that. Eddie Lacy uh, hater. Yeah, we were, we were pretty much in agreement on that, that Eddie Lacy was still a first-round pick, but uh, I think he was getting a little bit overhyped. Way overhyped, now, yeah. Now, we've seen him really struggle in the first two games, but he's had an absolutely brutal schedule so yeah, far. He's played I mean, faced the Seahawks and the Jets. Two top, top rush defenses, yeah. It, it just doesn't get much more difficult no, yeah, than that. So as hard as you're going to get, absolutely. So I think that he has one more fairly tough matchup here against the Lions, but after that, he's got back-to-back games against awful run defenses in Chicago and Minnesota. Yep. And, I mean, once he gets that momentum rolling and once the Packers start to see that they can still run the football, uh, yeah. they don't need to pass the ball every single play, for goodness sake. Um, I think that Eddie Lacy is going to end up working out as a top 10 running back this season. Yeah, I so agree. I would love to go after him, especially if you're in a league where somebody who has Eddie Lacy is in a tough running back situation where they need to acquire somebody that's got a little bit more stability in their offense. Um, and if they're panicking on Eddie Lacy, you got to go out there and target this guy, man. Uh, he's going to be better than he has been throughout oh, the yeah, beginning exactly. of the season. Exactly. And he has no one going, going for his job. He's not going to be replaced by James Starks. I mean, right. And yeah, I mean, he's, he's a perfect by low candidate. Cause like you said, I mean, he's just faced death row for rush defenses early on. Yeah. He's gonna, the schedule's starting to lighten up. I mean, Green Bay's going to be better than they've looked. I mean, they looked atrocious versus the Jets for most of that game until Geno melted down. They looked terrible versus Seattle. They're going to get it turned around to some extent. I don't know if they'll be an elite team, but they, they will. he'll certainly get going. The Packers will get going, and he, he'll have a very significant fantasy season. Definitely a top 10 running back. Yeah, agreed. So, who is your buy low candidate this week, Dustin? I think the number one guy, well, Eddie Lacy's probably after too. I really like Eddie Lacy, but I, I definitely think you should target Alshon Jeffrey because, I mean, even if he is, he's still kind of nursing his injury, but he played last week, so it couldn't have been too bad. He had a pretty underwhelming week two versus San Francisco. He had an okay week one, but everyone's still thinking about that gigantic performance by Brandon Marshall, so people are starting to, I think people are starting to get down a little bit on Alshon in that offense. And Jay Cutler leads the league right now, or is tied for the league lead in six TD passes. That offense is going to put up points on most defenses. They just came off a big win as 49ers. And I definitely think Alshon Jeffrey is a guy that some people are just going to be down on because for where you have to draft Alshon Jeffrey, he hasn't lived, he hasn't lived up to his ADP so far. So some people are going to be down on him. You could target him, get him for a price that you like. Yeah. I definitely like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the the one concern here with Alshon Jeffrey, I think, I, I think most people would agree that we expect him to do better than he has these first t- two weeks. But, I mean, are you at all concerned about the fact that he's cu- that he's nursing this injury? I mean, obviously Brandon Marshall looked like a monster, despite you know supposedly right. maybe not going to play. But um, both these guys played, and Alshon Jeffrey looked like nah, and Brandon Marshall looked like a superstar. So, I mean, are you worried about that injury situation? I think if it was serious enough that I would be worried about it, they wouldn't have risked him and played him. I mean, all the indications were that they didn't think he was going to play, and then he was like, no, I'm going to play. So he must have felt okay. Tresman must have felt okay with playing him. So I don't think it's as significant as maybe some people would think. So no, long term, I can't say I'm too worried about it being hurt. Yeah, I, I, I mostly agree with that as well. So let's move on and talk about our sell highs for this week. And these are the guys who we think their value is way higher than what it's going to be going forward right. um guys who have really blown up or and they're in a situation where you know suddenly it looks like they're going to be uh in an amazing situation and maybe they're not so much so dustin tell me who is the guy that you have as your sell high candidate for this week we sort of talked about him a little bit earlier when we were talking about the running back injuries it's um i have pierre thomas 
because I think with Mark Ingram going down, everyone's going to assume, oh man, Pierre Thomas is going to have such a more significant role. He's going to get all these carries. They're going to, Kyrie Robinson's going to get the majority of, I mean, he's going to probably get all the goal line work straight up. And also I think that if they're going to do a traditional rushing attack, it's going to go a lot more to Kyrie Robinson than to Pierre Thomas per se. Yeah. So I, I think people are going to not assume that and they're going to be like, oh man, huge role Pierre Thomas. And I definitely think if you own him, especially outside of PPR, you can sell him for way more than you get him for later on in the year. Yeah. Now, we, of course, still agree that Pierre Thomas is going to sustain roughly his oh, same yeah, value. Absolutely. He's not going He's down. He's not a bad player. No, but people are going to assume his role is going to majorly expand, and I don't think it will at all. Yeah, that suddenly bit. he's going to become a potential RB1, which right. is, guys, is just not going to happen. Right. So my guy is actually somebody who is in a very similar situation to that, although he's not in a situation where the running back got hurt ahead of him. But he's in a situation where um, I think people are going to overvalue him based on something that they saw, and that was Monday Night Football, Darren yeah. Sproles, Monster Game. Huge I mean, game. Leg- legitimately right now in his standard scoring leagues – Darren Sproles is tied with Tamarco Murray for the league lead in fantasy points at the running back position. In standard? Yeah, standard score really? leagues. I didn't even know yeah. that. Damn, that's wild. So, it's unsustainable, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Um, oh, yeah, without question. Yeah. <laughs> Darren Sproles is an absolute beast. He's a perfect fit for this offense. I love Darren Sproles. I think that he has a real potential to be a top 25 running back this season, a top 20 running back even this season. But you cannot rely on him as an every week starting player. You can't do it. He's not going to get that many touches. If they're in a situation where uh, they have, they're in a situation where they're going to run the football a lot, they get up in a game. Darren Sproles is not going to see the field as much. He's just not. Um, LaShawn McCoy is going to be the guy there. He's going to continue to be the guy. Darren Sproles is not cutting into LaShawn McCoy's touches like we talked about. He has a very specific role role. in this offense. And I'm not saying that Darren Sproles is not going to continue to be productive, like I said, but he has averaged such a ridiculous amount of yardage per touch that it's completely unsustainable. I mean, it's... People are going to be so enamored with that Monday night game too and be like, oh my God, like, yeah. I mean, he was making amazing cuts and everything like that. Oh, he was but Barry guys, Sanders. <laughs> guys, it, it's we know who Darren Sproles is. Very, very good awesome player. player. Very reliable as far as a pass catcher. He's going to be a guy who is going to be. Um, I think you can rely on him as a flex. Uh, I PPR, don't. PPR certainly. Right in PPR yeah. as a flex. I I love Darren Sproles going forward. But when we're in a standard scoring league and or we're talking about him being an RB two, I'm I'm a little bit skeptical that he's able to sustain that going forward. So uh, I like being able to sell high right now on Darren Sproles because I think that his value is at an all time high and I don't think it goes up from here. Yep. So I agree with that. Let's move on to our final segment of today's podcast, and that is our waiver wire rankings. Now, there are so many guys this week uh, oh, that I I didn't want us to sit and talk about every single one of them, but I'm going to quick run through my top 10 as far as names go, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to give you a guy who I think is being a little bit undervalued by some people. Um, I think Dustin and I disagree with this on this one just a little bit, but let me give you my top For 10. For undervalued or overvalued? Um, I think he's a little bit undervalued. Okay. So... Uh, my guy is my number one is Matt Asiata yeah. for the Minnesota Vikings. If for some reason he is still available in your league, you got to go out there and pick him up. Well, he might have been dropped as soon as Peterson was announced back. That'd have been a bad decision. <laughs> exactly. Number two, we've got Ahmad Bradshaw. Number three, Kyrie Robinson. Number four, Bobby Rainey. Number five, Niles Paul. Number six, Niall Davis. Number seven, Donald Brown. Number eight, Kirk Cousins. 9, James Jones, and 10, Zach Ertz. Now, the guy that I'm talking about is somebody that I think is a little bit undervalued right now and somebody that uh, I think people aren't paying attention to just exactly what he did in Week 2 is Niles Paul, and he's the tight end for the Washington Redskins who stepped in uh, for another tight end, uh, Jordan Reed, who was injured. Now, this is a guy who I actually invested in personally coming into Week 2 because I had lost Jordan Cameron in a league. And I understand that Jordan Reed is eventually going to be back on the field and he's probably going to get back that starting job. But you have to realize that Niles Paul put up beautiful fantasy numbers. And I understand it's a one-week situation. But, I mean, the guy put up, what was it, eight catches for 99 yards a and game, a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, and he led the team with 11 targets. Yeah. And this is his first time on the field. Keep that in mind. First time significant playing time on the field with a new quarterback. 
okay? This isn't RG3. We're talking about Kirk Cousins, who he already has chemistry with, okay? So I love that whole situation. Um, he's extremely fast. He's literally one of the fastest tight ends in the NFL as far as, like, pure straight, straight line, line speed, speed. goes. Yeah. And he's a matchup nightmare for linebackers and safeties that are going to try and cover him. Now, he's undersized for the position, and that's a little bit of a concern. If he's going to try and go over the middle, he might get popped by a guy um you, you know who's a bigger safety or something like Cam that Chancer but might ruin his life or something right you know? ex exactly you know these big safeties these these guys who can lay the hits on guys i mean you could see a situation where niles paul ends up getting hurt but i mean for the time being we don't have really there really aren't that many huge big money tight ends out there this year i mean we've got the big guys like we've got the jimmy grams even the rob gronkowski's and of course the julius thomas's but other than that it's kind of just a crapshoot i mean obviously antonio gates is ex exceeding all expectations but other than that there really hasn't been a lot of consistent production at the fantasy tight end position this year and there's a lot of movement so i really like niles paul as somebody who i think could potentially be a week-to-week -week starter at least until jordan reed gets back and uh, I think that the upside is there for somebody who could potentially give you big numbers. He's not going to be uh, the guy who gets you four catches every week for, you know, 37 yards like Heath Miller. I, I, I hate those type of players because they give you no upside. Yeah. I think Niles Paul is the kind of guy who he could be a huge boom or he could be a huge bust. But I'm willing to take that chance because the opportunity for the boom is so important at the tight end position. Mm -hmm. So, Dustin, who are your top 10 waiver wire rankings for this week um mine is pretty similar to yours i have ossie out of one bradshaw kyrie robinson kirk cousins donald brown bobby rainey nile davis niles paul zach Ertz, and travis kelsey um we're, 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 i mean we're, i i agree with you to, to most of the extent about niles paul i just don't think i i just don't like falling in love with the guys doing off one week performances and like you said george Reed's still going to be there so while i like him again i i i usually want to see more than one week I think there's a huge I, – I, if, if Ahmad Bradshaw is still available in any league, I think it's only a matter of time before he really, really establishes himself as a dominant back there. Yeah. So I, I think I, he's a I agree. huge priority on the waiver wire this week as, as Ahmad Bradshaw and Matt Asiata. Because both yeah. those guys – I mean, it's week – we're going into week three, and those guys look like long-term starters for their teams right now. And that's so rare in fantasy to have a starting running back available week three just in, on the waivers just sitting there. Oh, yeah. So absolutely man it's it's so very very rare to come across these opportunities and you have to take them when you can yeah if you have um, waiver order yeah you have even, to. that's why you don't that's why you don't pick up alan hearns last week right right yeah. and so that really is i think this type of situation where you need to be able to address the waiver wire and prioritize based on what the realistic opportunity is that this guy continues to produce at a big rate from week to week. And, and obviously, right. Alan Hearns was the guy that a lot of people looked at in week one as a potential breakout guy. Week two, didn't really look like it. Yeah. <laughs> so Alan Robinson looked a lot better, yeah. Just... So, you know, it, it's it's a week-to-week -week, uh, situation, but weeks like this where there oh, are major ton situations. Of yeah, ton of, any of those guys I named, I'd totally use a waiver wire on. That's like nine, ten guys deep, so... I mean, yep. just, just the name. I mean, Travis Kelsey had a huge game for Denver. And he, well, he's still behind Fasano. You assume that's only a matter of time before that changes. Right. right Donald Brown, course. I mean, he's a starter for at least a little while now. Bobby yep. Brainy, we talked about him. Nile Davis, we talked about all these guys. Yep. And, and you know, it's it's really one of those situations where you just got to go out there and you got to get somebody this week. Um, yeah. There will be a, one of these guys. claimed. Yeah. One of these guys is going to be a key piece on a fantasy championship roster at the end of this year. So. Yeah. Take oh, your chances it, yeah. and let's 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 roll the dice on these guys because I think that yep. it's something you've got to do. Yep, now is the week to use your waiver. So with that being said, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you let us know in the comments section below and by pressing that like button. Also, if you are new to the channel, make sure that you press the subscribe button as well. Now, if you have any questions about your lineup this week or if you're looking to make any trades or anything like that and you want some advice or if you need some help on the waiver wire, be mm -hmm. sure to drop us a note in the comment section because we would love to answer those questions in our next episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll talk to you again later this week for week three and our preview from the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.